Hey, what's up guys? Eric Thane here from Cinema Mastery, and today we're gonna to be doing another lighting breakdown. Let's get into it. All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be looking at a video that I shot a few years ago in France. Actually, this is for the wine region of saint Emilion. Uh, France, which is a prestigious wine region in France. Um, amazing, amazing area. And I actually got into this job by one of my cinema masters who picked up this client in France. Um, she lives in New York, uh, Elizabeth, and she was able to fly out to France and direct this entire project and, uh, and turned around and hired me to come and DP it, which was a really awesome experience and just shooting in this amazing place. And what I wanted to go through today, if we look at the video here, um, you can see I've already broken down some of these scenes in past videos, uh, but we've got this old uh, grandfather just kind of like reliving some memories, going through the wine cellars and just revisiting some of the years from his life. And uh, it's a really cool video, really cool story. And part of this um, video, this commercial here, we got to shoot down in these tunnels. And these are tunnels that like run underneath the area. And um, this winery owns a portion of these tunnels where they store all their wine bottles. And this was really incredible. In this area, there were like there were like ancient artifacts down there from like from like ancient Roman times. Like it was insane. And so there's like all this stuff that like should be in a museum. And so like all of our camera gear was like next to these things. And we're just like hanging out. We're having to be like really careful with the wine bottles and all this stuff. And it's just this amazing, amazing space. And it was really cool and like such an honor and such a cool privilege to be able to shoot in a place like this. But it also kind of had some of its own challenges because we also had to be very, very careful with our gear because everything down there is extremely fragile. So I'm going to jump into a little bit of like how we shot some of these scenes, how we lit some of these things. And then uh, and then from there, kind of talk about some of the logistics of how we did this. So this was the first shot that we did down there. This is kind of just a wide shot of our grandfather kind of walking past this wall, uh, this very impressive wall of wine bottles, uh, which is just absolutely amazing. So they have all these wine bottles. And so we set up this shot. And um, here's kind of how we did this. We wanted to go for a moody scene. This is a dark tunnel. Like if you turn the lights off, this is like a cave. It's pitch black down there, uh, which is also really interesting for lighting it because you, we had to relight everything there's there was no natural light to work with and so so i wanted to create this vibe and like this kind of silhouetted nice dark vibe so that it kind of creates the mood of this tunnel but still have it be lit enough so that we could see them so what we got going on here is um our our main light that you can see in the shot that's creating these kind of shadows is actually back here so we've got a uh, i believe it was like an airy open face light um a tungsten that we were just blasting uh, into this open this through this doorway and onto these bottles and I wanted to create this line right here of shadow Which just creates this really interesting dynamic and this contrast between the shadow and the light over here And so and so what I did is you know this kind of looks like there's like a doorway there so, so so if you can imagine like a doorway and then the light is outside the doorway and the top of that doorway is kind of cutting off the light and creating this effect on the bottles. Now there wasn't actually a doorway there, so what we're doing here is we actually we had that light there, and then we've got a like a four by four floppy just right in front of the light, which is creating that edge and, and drawing that line, which turned out really cool. In fact, if you pay attention, you can notice that the line doesn't actually continue all the way. It kind of ends right here, which is probably the edge or the corner of our floppy right there, which is uh, kind of interesting. And so that's kind of our main key light. And what's happening there is that we're lighting up the background and allowing our talent here in the front to be kind of silhouetted in front of it. This is one way to look at lighting sometimes. Like rather than lighting your talent, how can you light, especially when you're going for a moody look like this, how can you light the background so that they are just kind of silhouetted in front of it? And even though he's kind of dark, as long as you still got that edge, that dark edge in front of it, and you can see the shape of him, we're gonna be able to tell what's going on. And so it's not such an issue. Now, we don't want him to be completely silhouetted. We want him to still be able to see him. And so you'll notice that there's another light up here um, creating this kind of glow effect. That is happening because um, we did have a little bit of haze in there. Uh, I don't know how much haze we're actually seeing in this shot, but that is mostly happening because that light is just barely outside of frame. And so when you've got a light like that that's really bright, just outside of frame, it's gonna create that glowing effect. So what we've got going on here is um, it's actually a Kino flow, and there's either two or four bulbs in it. 
I don't remember, this was a while ago, but it was a Kino flow that we're using and it was actually sitting up on top of these bottles. So this is a little bit precarious. If you look at where these bottles kind of come, like this line kind of comes up here. So if you can imagine right up there is where that Kino flow is sitting. And we had to be really, really careful about setting it up there and making sure that we weren't breaking anything. And uh, and we were just like really cautious. We had a couple grips helping me out with that and um, just making sure that that wasn't causing any problems. So that's what's creating this glow here. And then it's also creating a nice little um, key light on our subject here so that he's not completely silhouetted. So we've got this nice reverse key. You'll notice that the light is breaking right there on that corner of his face. So we've got shadow over here and then light over here. And uh, this shadow is not very dark, um, probably because this light is bouncing off this wall and kind of filling in his shadows there. But we are getting a little bit of a reverse key effect on him to make it look nice. And then of course, lastly, because of this light that's kind of blasting through here, we've got this really cool shadow happening on the wall there, um, just from our grandfather kind of walking in. All right, let's move on from there. So that was the first scene that we shot. Um, this is the same thing. So we've got bottles on the wall. It's just kind of an out of focus, blurry bokeh shot of the bottles, um, which is just kind of cool as an insert there. The next scene is this one. Okay, so this is actually a different room in the cellar. And uh, there's quite a few shots that we got in here that I'll show you. Uh, but this one's really simple. So what's happening here is we have that same Kino flow. So on the back wall here, so if you look, there's, there's the corner of the room. We've got shelves coming this way, and then there's shelves going that way uh, behind him. I'm actually shooting through like a, a grate into this room, which is why you've got this nice foreground element happening, uh, kind of framing him really nicely. And then there's there's probably another one over here as well. So I'm like shooting through this fence uh, gate type thing into this room. And then if you look at this light that we've got happening on um, his back here, we are silhouetting him, uh, which is really nice. And what's happening is up here on this shelf, we've got that Kino flow again. So same light happening there. Um, just set up, I believe it was set up on a C stand and just kind of boomed out over him so that we could get this light on him. And so that's giving us this really nice rim light around our talent. You'll notice that it is a little bit soft. That's because it's a Kino, okay? So it's not like a hard light source coming through. And then we don't have his face lit up in this shot, but it still works because you'll notice that like, since the background is lit up, like I was talking about in the last shot, we've got him kind of silhouetted against that background. So it's creating the shape of his face. And as a viewer, you're still able to tell a little bit about what's going on. So it still works. Now, moving on from there, we've got um, a couple more shots in the same scene. So that's the same place, same thing happening, just a more close up shot. Um, this is, uh, again, the same thing. So, so what's happening here, what you're seeing is this, this rim light that is happening around him that you can see all over here. That's coming from that Kino flow that's back there. And then we've got some nice light actually bouncing up and hitting him in the face. That's just light that's bouncing off of these shelves and hitting him. And again, creating that reverse keyed effect. Okay. So we've got light over here on the front side of the face. Uh, or, or rather the back side of the face, really. And then and then shadow over here on this side of the face. And then we've got this really nice silhouette thing happening. Um, just really, really pretty. Okay, moving on. Uh, we've got the same thing here. Um, you'll notice that the light here is actually traveling a little bit further over to this shoulder. That's because he has moved this way more towards the wall. And so now the Kino is more above him than it is behind him like it was before. And so that's why you're getting that effect. All right, let's keep going here. I think we actually come back to that scene again. So there's a, there's a couple shots. So we really liked how this looked. Uh, yeah, again, same same thing, same exact thing happening. Just that one Kino flow uh, behind him lighting up this whole scene. And let's see, that is the same one just from a different angle. And then that again is the same thing, um, yeah. So you so you can you can really see it here. You can see all the haze back there. We've got some haze in the room. This foreground element. We've got the light kind of creating a rim around him, around his fingers, and then that really nice silhouette of his face against the background. Um, this is just a gorgeous shot, if I do say so myself. <laughs> okay, um, really love how this turned out. Really amazing. 
Okay, so from there, we move on to this scene. Okay, so this is a little bit different location. And again, going with that theme of simplicity, we're not really doing that much here. We wanna keep that moody vibe. Uh, all we're doing is we want we have one light in here kind of lighting up this scene. And so you notice that we've got this really cool like cross hatch effect happening here. So there's these gates, these fences kind of inside of this cellar. Uh, that were really interesting and so I was like man let's you know to make this interesting I wanted to light up the wall again like we did on that first shot and just silhouette him in front of it which creates that kind of movie moody vibe but I was thinking like what else could we do with this to make it a little bit more interesting and so I took that light and actually put it behind the fence so it was shining through that fence and then creating this pattern on the wall which just adds this really cool interest and like makes the space look so much more interesting rather than just having a rock wall. And so that's what's happening there. As we kind of scroll through it, you can see what's happening. You'll notice that it's the exact same thing. So it looks like the light, I don't even remember. Uh, the light, light was coming from this direction. And so if we go into this shot, you'll see that now you can see that light that's coming across here and is hitting this wall. But then it's also you know giving us these really nice little highlights on these bottles. Uh, which is really cool, and then giving us this really cool rim on him, and then any light that's happening on his face that's allowing us to see him is just what's bouncing off of this wall and onto him. So it just goes to show that like you can shoot really dark stuff sometimes, like especially when you don't have any natural light to work with, things are gonna end up dark, but like this scene is very dark, but it doesn't feel underexposed because we've got this light here, and we've got these highlights happening on these bottles, and we've and we've got this light over here. So we've talked about this before, how you know, creating dark images is not just about like make to make it feel so that, like it's not underexposed is more about having a good range of tonal values than it is about like actually making it bright. You can have a dark scene where things are generally dark. But as long as you have some highlights and some midtones in there, it's going to make the image feel balanced and still feel okay. All right, so going on from there, we've got you know a couple other shots. That is the exact same thing, just a different angle. And then we've got one more shot here, which is so cool. This one right here. So this was a, a scene that I that I noticed as we were walking through these like catacombs. That there was this spot, like we're in these caves, right? And in this cave, there was a spot where this cave opened up, and right above it, there was a hole that actually went to the outside, and so you could see sunlight coming through. And it was really cool. This, um, so that's that's the kind of that light that's coming down through here uh, on him. And it was just this like cove area where there was light coming down. It was really cool. And so in this scene, we didn't actually have to light anything. We had the sunlight coming down, and then we had um, the, this light over here is just one of the cave lights that was on. And so that worked out well. Um, I don't know how well you can see it, but like right here, you can see some of these artifacts. There's like a there's like a carved face right there, and like some vases and other like random things sitting on this these are like ancient artifacts that should like be in a museum <laughs> it was crazy and we had our gear all around them um it's like all this stuff's just sitting there and uh, for this scene um we actually so the time of day that we were shooting the light the direct the sunlight wasn't directly coming through that hole it wasn't actually bright enough so i did have a crew take um a light up there and shine it down through that hole so that we could get a little bit more light shining down on him. And then we did blast a ton of haze into here to create this kind of hazy effect in there. And so what that's doing is just creating this really nice top light effect on him. We're getting some light on the top of his head and his face and then on his shoulders and arms, just like that. And then, and then you'll notice that as the light is kind of shining down in the background, down here we've got his legs just kind of silhouetted in front of that. Um, so it's creating this really nice outline around him and a really beautiful shot. And then, um, yeah, so that's the last one. So if we move forward there, then you got the close up of that. And of course, we're getting that top lighting on him, which because of the angle that we're coming from is technically a reverse key, if you will. Since we're shooting up from this angle, then the front side of his face is actually the bottom where all this shadow is, okay? And the back side of his face would be, you know, if you think about it this way, would be this side. So when we talk about reverse key lighting or trying to get contrast and shape on a person's face, it doesn't always have to be left and right. Sometimes it can be top and bottom, depending on the direction you're coming from. The most important thing is just to make sure that your shadows, which are right here, are coming towards the camera. And 
you know, if we take it even a step further than that, it's not even so much about the shadows coming towards the camera. It's just about having shadow and light on the face in order to make it look three dimensional. That's what gives it that 3D look is the contrast between the light and the shadow. So we've got really nice shadow happening in here and then this really nice light happening on his face there, all coming from that light just blasting from up above him. So there you go, there's a quick breakdown of how he shot these really crazy scenes inside these catacombs, these wine cellars um, that are just like uh, hundreds of years old. It was really amazing. Now, if you're a filmmaker and you wanna learn how to light scenes like this so that when you go into your scenes and uh, you're in really weird situations like this, like I was, and you wanna know how to approach this, I wanna invite you to check out my Lighting Secrets course, which is down in the description below. Inside the course, I walk you through my entire methodology for how I approach lighting different scenes. And it's the same methodology regardless of what scene you're shooting. So when you go into a place like this, that's like a catacomb or something crazy or something different than what I'm talking about here, you'll know exactly how to think through the process and know what to do and where to put the lights in order to create a really nice cinematic look. So if that's you, you're a filmmaker and you want to improve your videos and make them look better with lighting, check out the Lighting Secrets course down in the description below. If you've got any other questions or comments about this video, feel free to leave them down below. I will take a look at them and we will see you on the next video.